the climax of the day for Mrs. Housewife as she whips up the victuals for a family that will soon be in from work and play. This is the puppy pot at work. Listen to it, Bert. Here's a gift that would rate a kiss from any woman. A Westinghouse toaster. And isn't it a beauty? Kitchen memories are something people share. On the opening night of this exhibition at Sonoma Valley Museum of Art, hundreds of people were talking to each other, talking to people they didn't even know and sharing their memories of each individual utensil or something that struck their memory. That's what jumbo soups are, mm, good. The collection itself, I started it in the early 80s, I think, when my husband Gerald Hill and I were traveling inexpensively around California. I had a $3 limit then, which lasted for decades. I only switched to an $8 limit per utensil maybe 10 years ago. This is one of my oldest pieces. It's a citrus squeezer from the 1790s in England made of leather, wood, and brass. And you put the tiny lemon as they were then or lime in that hole. It has smaller holes in the bottom. You put this on top and you press and squeeze and there you got your juice. The first pop-up toaster, which is part of my collection, was invented about the same time as Wonder Bread first issued sliced bread within a few months of each other. Because Wonder Soft Whipped Bread is made from batter, not dough. It has no holes. That's how Wonder Bread got a head start on the sliced bread revolution. This is my oldest toaster, a gift from the Kitty McKay collection, also from the early 1800s England. And a servant, probably on her knees would hang this over the fire with a piece of bread in it until it was toasted. Oh, the toast -o later my most recent toaster acquisition. I love it. It has um, a hole at each end and you plug it in with some caution. You flip the switch, which looks like a light switch, to turn it on and put the bread in one end and it's conveyed along by little metal teeth and it has a spile later window so you can watch the bread go by as it toasts and when it's ready it comes out the other end. It's, it's hilarious and there are very few of them available. They were built in 1948 only and probably for good reason. As part of that industrial revolution and evolution of kitchen gadgets, egg beaters came into the forefront. It was a real status symbol in England and, and the Eastern United States and France to have frothy uh, desserts and everything foamy. And of course, before the egg beater, all of that work had to be done by servants who worked and worked and beat and beat with whisks and less, less convenient things. The egg beater came along and allowed those servants a little less work and it also allowed less wealthy people the opportunity to produce those status symbol frothy foods that supposedly marked the fact that you had servants. And, so the, and then it also allowed everyday cooks to make whipped cream and whipped eggs and all sorts of goodies that we enjoy today. You know, of course the first mashing of food came with mortars and pestles. Actually, it wasn't mortars and pestles, it was sticks and then sticks and stones, which will break your bones and a few seeds too. So that was the first way that people made juices and mashed up food to process it so it could be digested, especially if you'd lost your teeth early in a cave. Eventually we developed knives and those were very handy. As devices developed, with manufacturers always trying to make uh, gadgets that were faster and easier for people to use. Try, that was a marketing tool as well as a design tool. We developed choppers, of which I have many on display, hand choppers, jar choppers, um, all sorts of things. And eventually we got up to the cuisine art. And you'll notice that now chefs are going back to knives. 
And the reason is that the foods come out much more natural than they did mashed and, and macerated and pul pulverized to death in machines. It, machines also change the starch content of some food. So we're back to mashing potatoes with hand mashers because they don't raise the starch level so much. And people, you notice on television, chefs are again using knives. You rarely see a cuisine art or a similar device on television shows. The government and food producers kept putting out pamphlets that were given away with various things from mayonnaise to jello to um, mixers and all sorts of things, including during World War II books of food ration stamps, which I have on display. And with that came government pamphlets on how to cook healthily with buying food with your ration stamps. My Twinkies binge. <laughs> um, the day that Hostess went bankrupt, I dashed around two counties in California buying up every Hostess product and Wonder Bread product available from every shelf. Now, that was in 2012, and the ones that were supposed to be squishy are still squishy, but they're all on display, and we'll see if they do last 40 years.